All right, this review will be spoilers, but only minor spoilers. So I emphasize these are minor spoilers. Most of the film will still be a mystery and a secret for you to see. But I will go into specific examples. So if you want total coldness, don't listen to this right now. Watch the movie and then come back. If you're completely new and more intermediate into Dune, hopefully you'll get a lot out of this. So what to say? I will say I think if you come in cold, ironically, if you are totally new to Dune, you'll get a lot more out of this. If you've read the books and know the mythology, you'll smile a lot. They do reference quite a few things. There's a lot of good Easter eggs, a lot of things that are very precise. But I would say, and I'm not going to go too far into this, but it's inevitable. How does this stack up against the Lynch version? I'm going to say the Lynch version, even though this is a better film, the Lynch version is a much stronger Dune film. This is a slightly weaker Dune film. And if you want the plot, you should really go with the sci-fi version. So is this the definitive Dune? No. It goes very far from the book in certain places. Some places radically, some places just a little bit. And it does get a lot of details right, but they do recontextualize things. And I think that's going to be a problem later on. They also tease a lot of the trilogy. You're getting a little glimpse of Dune Messiah and big glimpses of part two. So it's a little deceptive to say that, well, they adapted. No, they didn't. They didn't really adapt to half the book. No. What they did was take the first third of the book and they cut and spliced little bits and pieces of the later parts of the book as well as Dude Messiah and inserted it in weird places. If you want to say, well, what is this? It's basically adapting 40% of the book, a big chunk of the beginning and little bits and pieces of the end. We get most of the major cast, most of the major people, right? So we get Leto, we get Duncan Idaho, we get the Baron, we get Peter, we get Two Fear, so on and so forth. We get even Mapes. We even see Aaliyah very briefly in a cameo. But a lot of people don't show up they're mentioned, like the Emperor's mentioned, the Princess is mentioned, but we don't see them. And if I'm not incorrect, we never hear about Feed. He's not even mentioned, but we do get the Baron, we do get the Beast, we get Dr. Yue, we get a lot of the minor people. And a lot of people you don't expect to show up do show up. In terms of the main cast, we get the main players, and we even get some of the small ones. But how they work and how they act is very strange here. So I'll give one example. Gurney is very one note. Duncan is great. We get a lot of different sides to him. We get a lot of the personality. He is basically, of course, the stoic warrior, but we get a lot of him being more calm. His friendship and love with Paul is very strong. There's a great scene where he feels like he's a failure and his interaction with Paul was amazing. But with Gurney, it was a little disappointing. He is very one note. I will say this, he did play an instrument. They filmed it, but they don't show that. And we'd even see a little bit of the instrument in the movie. So, and Paul mentions this saying, can you play me a song? He says, eh, don't have time for that. So the characterizations are very erratic. Some characters shine, but a lot of characters, they do well. The performances are great across the board. The performances are good, but the script is very uneven. And I'm not going to lie about that. It was very uneven. And the good parts were really great, but the bad parts are like, oof. Um, I was never bored. I think people are exaggerating how slow it is, but... If you're not familiar with the book, you will be like, didn't we cover this already? Can we move it along? Uh, it is definitely a few things for the book readers where like, okay, yes, we saw this before, but there's a little shift and change. So it seems very minute, but there's a lot of great acting by Timothée. So there's a very subtle shift from Paul because it seems like he's doing the same thing over and over again, just whining about being this predestiny. No, by the end, it's very powerful. You see it. It's very small, but if you pay attention, because Denis borrowing from Sicario and a lot of horror imagery, he comes off like a monster. He, you see how dangerous and how much he feels his power. And he does make a choice. He says, yes, we're going to stay here. Because it's very explicit saying, Jessica's like, no, we need to leave Arrakis. He's like, no, we're staying. So, and we see enough blood imagery to be like, oh, wow, he's accepting what he's going to happen to him and also what's going to happen to Arrakis. Beyond the main characters... That's where things get a little weird. I'll just give another example. For instance, Dr. Yue has a really great story. It's a very great plot line, the way the twists and turns, very good, it's its own thing. But then, at the very end, I'm not gonna lie, he comes off like a little bitch, and he just dies very unceremoniously, and you're like, that was it? So his story was really good for a lot of the film, and then it just, I also don't think the Baron is a good idea. I understand this is becoming a fan favorite. They like how Stellan is doing it, Basically, he's taking a lot from Marlon Brando. He basically even looks like Marlon Brando. So if you're more familiar with film history and a lot of other films, you're going to be like, this thing is borrowing a lot from David Lynch. It's borrowing from a lot of film classics. 
So I understand it's an enjoyable performance, but I think it's going to create props for the mythology because this Baron is insanely sadistic. That's not true in the books. In the books, it's more he's ruthless but pragmatic. Here, he's just an outright butcher. So you're like, that's not going to give room much for the Beast or the other characters or Peter because now Peter is just basically reduced to a helper who just says, yes, he, Baron, you are evil. Here's how you can be more evil. It doesn't do very much. So some very strange decisions and way the characters work. But also a lot of great subtle touches. There's this conversation with Leto and Paul where they're talking about destiny and you see a lot of grave sites and it's just very subtle. They don't go into it too much, but you can feel the history of Caladan. You can feel the history of House Atreides. And near the end, I wouldn't say it's incompetent, but it's very strange. For instance, when we get to the Jameis fight finally, just the way the camera moves and for whatever reason, he increases the frame rate and it's not shaky cam, but the way he just basically moves and turns the camera, you're like, why? And I have to be honest, I'd say that of the major characters, because they really concentrate on four characters, Duncan, Paul, the Baron, and Lady Jessica. Her Lady Jessica is the weakest. I think the Lynch version still gives us the strongest version of Jessica. The sci-fi version is second place, but this one is fairly disappointing. I just think Denis and her should have modulated the performance. They needed to edit her better. So, and she's in this film a lot. I mean, a lot. And some parts I thought were fine when she's crying and very emotive, but they do that way too many times. And I just thought, like, please stop. It was getting a little frustrating. So the worst parts are the music and the characterization at points. The plot is a little meandering, but I didn't mind that. You don't go to this kind of movie for the plot. You're going here for the atmospherics and the tone. That was very well done. They went a little overboard in terms of the darkness. It's not a caricature. We do see things mostly... And they do change the colors a little bit midway and towards the end when we get to Arrakis. But I did feel like he's basically going back to too many old tricks with Sicario as well as Blade Runner and other things. I will say it's shocking how much they steal from David Lynch and as well as from Podorowski. Some of the times it's respectful. So sometimes I was like, whoa, there's this scene where basically the death of Mapes is a foreshadow for the invasion by the Harkonnens. That is very similar to the Lynch version. They tw change things superficially, but I'm like, whoa, that is very similar. Is this its own thing? Yes. It's basically a kind of triad between the Lynch version, the book, and what Denis wanted. It, it's just very uneven, very, very contradictory, very weird. Like, the Sardaukar come off like really like clowns. Like, they're only very powerful in groups. And they're supposed to be just ferocious on their own, but uh, and I'll give one final example. For instance, when they're hunting a certain character, I'm not going to say who, they just walk up to the desert and you're like, well, you're dead because now the sandworms are coming. And they're shocked the sandworms are coming. You're like, how stupid are they? But then beyond that is this character they're hunting does a does like a hero moment. And you're like, but earlier the person's like, you know, I'm not a hero. I'm not going to take sides. And I'm like, but you just did take a side. There's a lot of like things like that that happen. Just characters radically change out of nowhere plot just changes out of nowhere and a lot of the details yes are in the books a lot of the details are very strong but a lot of things are changed ultimately this is a great film but i do feel they exaggerate how faithful they are to the book they're not they're telling their own story but they're borrowing heavily from lynch from other films denny's past work so it's uneven it's more good than bad but if you know the books and the mythology it will be very frustrating and if you don't know the books but you pay attention just to the plot and the characters and dialogue. It, it, it will be like, hmm, well, half of this is well done, very strong, but half of it is complete, complete nonsense. It's like, wait, what? Huh? Wait, doesn't this contradict that? This doesn't jive with that. But again, where it is strong, it is very strong. And it's a very great film. But there are a lot of lapses. Finally, should you see this in the theater? Well, if you have a low tolerance for boredom, no. If the music becomes too overpowering or annoying, no. And there are a few boring sections. I didn't think there was too much. But if you want control over the volume, over the lighting, as well as the music, I don't want to say this, but probably HBO Max is for you because there are moments where the music is too much, it's a little too dark, and it is a little too boring in certain parts. It's not too much of the film, but at, at points it was needless. It was like needlessly annoying and needlessly in your face so i think overall if those are issues for you you will probably want to see this hbo max and just buy it on blu-ray i think that's the better way to support legendary and denis but get your the best experience i will say you will miss out on things if you don't see it in theaters but you will also not endure certain 
cringe moments, which were very long sometimes. I mean, he, re- I mean, I'll, I'll give him this. I think he and Hans go all go all in, and at times I appreciated that they're artists, but at times I'm like, please moderate yourselves, and they just didn't. And so I mostly love this. I think it's mostly great. I'm giving it 8.5 out of 10, but it's not the Snyder Cut. It's not The Shining. It's not one of the best films of all time. It's not near perfect, but it's a very strong film. But at times I felt it could have been stronger. The script, the editing, the performances could have been modulated better. But ultimately, yes, big picture, it's a great film. But if you do pay attention, a lot of places where it was needlessly, needlessly annoying and frustrating. And it is what it is. But definitely worth seeing, however you see it. Please, if you're not going to pay for the theater experience, please pay for the Blu-ray when it comes out. But yeah, it, I will not going to lie. Some cringe moments were very cringe. And if they're too much for you, it, it may be a lot to endure. All right. Thanks for listening.